Well, there is a new trailer out for UFC 300. We've been talking about that fight coming up. We've been doing weighing in on the odds and all those things. But they got this trailer that is supposedly hot. So we're going to watch it together and kind of give it our little, well, what do we think? My little side piece. Are you ready for You this? and I get a Netflix and little, chill. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Dave, hit that play button. Let's go. I want to see this. And I have not seen it yet. Have you seen no. it yet? Never seen before. Okay. This is a sport. One of the greatest sports There's in Jeff the world. Gladden. This oh. is mixed martial arts. This is the sport of the future. I can see the future. We're very excited. We want to make this the Super Bowl of mixed martial arts. There's the first Dana. <laughs> that was Dana with hair. It's crazy how money fixes your teeth. James Wormy was the interview. Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing. I've been around the toughest fighters in the world. Can you turn it up a little? They could not last in this ring. Super football. This moment, you are seeing it right now live on television. This is where we go. Do you want to be a fighter? That is my question. Do you want to be a fighter? This is where we go. Oh, head kick. It's not hard to see the past right here in the present. Look at me now. Because greatness is a mirror. the other it's the parallels that make the sport times i know he is afraid of a smack do you really think i'm afraid of you man are you crazy <laughs> i like that really make it look like who the best man is at the end i can submit you i can out wrestle you bro i want to get you i'll be surprised if i don't knock him out i'll be surprised if i get hit <laughs> i like how they those, are, those guys aren't even fighting that's great i love it all of these men yep. and women are connected they are connected in time and in history Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, what they have helped create together is magic. Oh. Man, these guys are warriors, and we celebrate them and all they there. <clears throat> UFC 100, who would have thought? UFC 200, unimaginable. UFC 300, and now it feels like we're just getting started. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize. Ah, I loved it. It's been a long road, John. I loved it's been it. A long road, dude. That was. I'll tell you what. They, I loved the fact how they. I got. I got tears in my eyes yeah. almost. I loved how they mirrored fights that did not happen, that should have happened. Yeah. And they put those in there. That was fucking awesome. And it was good to hear Mike Goldberg's voice and and Jeff Blatnick's and different people that were part of making the UFC what it is and seeing Dana with his hair. <laughs> uh, oh, that was good. Dana with like his it. hair was great. Uh, and his fucked up teeth. <laughs> yeah, well. So money gets you, you new teeth, man. Things. Get to the veneers. It, man. Money will get you new teeth. Get veneers. Hey, look, I mean, the days, there's so much history there. I love this. I love the, the quick shot of AJ. You know. Oh, my God. Him against Al, I was like, my God, that's AJ. Yeah. You just, know, just the way they did it, that was beautiful. I love I that. love how they, they slow played it. It wasn't, it was two two minutes and 50 seconds. They slow played it. It was a good setup. They kind of eased into the history of it all. Um, man, for a lot of those fights, I was sitting inside the arena, you know, whether with the UFC right. or not with the UFC. So yeah. yeah. Inside the arena, watching them uh, get after it. So it's, it was good. It was definitely, <clears throat> it brought tears to your eyes, but it was for me, it was it. It was fun to see. I mean, the, Dave, go back to the beginning of it. I want to take a look at this. You know, it's keep going, keep going. I, I love that intro with the original. Stop it right Hello, there. Go back. I go back. There, right there. Okay, that right there was the drawing of they were going to take and kind of like what Bellator did in the 
when they did the kickboxing and then would do the MMA afterwards where they would lower the cage down. That was what that drawing was where they were talking about lowering it down onto, onto the it. thing. You know, it ended up being different. But uh, you can see it says a nylon net and aluminum tube and stuff. But yeah, that was uh, the ideas that they were coming up with. That's funny. That's crazy, yeah. man. Like, just, <laughs> Was it circular or was it going to be... Uh, no, it was circular. It was circular. Time. Yeah. <clears throat> Did it end up being circular to begin with, or was it octagon always? No, it wasn't. No, it was an octagon for one reason. They bought fence panels that are straight. And if I, you yeah. know, what's the easiest way for me to make it look? They wanted it to be the biggest thing is, you know, we don't want to put them in a ring. We don't want them to, to, we don't want it to look like boxing. We don't want it to be where it's a boxing ring, you know, because, you know, you had other things happening. You had, you know, Peg Crace was in Japan. You know, they were using a ring and ropes and stuff. So they wanted it to, to be something that would contain the fight, make it to where people couldn't slide out yeah. underneath and do those things, but make it different. And so it's the only way that, you know, the octagon really came about because it was panels. It was, you know, that whole, the, the first, you know, octagon was all wood underneath. You had these posts that they set up. The thing was heavy as shit, <laughs> you know. As far as everything, and then the way they put the fence and everything, you know, it, it would flex, but the the flooring in the early days was like concrete. Mm. It was so hard because there were so many posts, and guys would actually go around and test to see where the posts were at and look for the mat if there was some marking on the mat to say, that's where I'm going to try to pick someone up and drop them. You know, after about 10 events, they started, you know, doing those things. <laughs> uh, scroll forward a little bit on that. <clears throat> yeah. Here we go. Some of the history, like, you know, in this, let me see what the biggest upset, obviously to me, it's Matt Sarah versus GSP. No doubt about I it. I believe that's we, probably the biggest, by far the biggest upset I think I've ever seen. Yep. I mean, you could potentially say like the hype around BJ that Jens Pulver beaten BJ the first time was, it was a pretty big, cause I think that the no. odds had BJ being heavily favored. Yeah, but but he, he, Jens was the champ. Yeah, I get it. I understand. Yeah. Jens was the champ, and it's like no. And you get a lot of people would go to Holly Holm versus uh, Ronda, and it's like no. Yeah, that's not because if you take a look, you know, Holly was was a person that you know the UFC built up because they wanted to bring her into that range of fighting Ronda, where Matt Sarah had been cut, mm -hmm. came back on the show, the the Ultimate Fighter. He won his way onto the you know. The prize was you got to fight the champ. Yeah. So Travis Luter got to fight Anderson Silva and Matt Sarah got to fight, you know, George St. Pierre and no one. It, I, I look at going into that fight, you know, I didn't think Matt Sarah was going to win until the, the moment that I stepped into his locker room compared to George St. Pierre. And I've told you, yeah, you know, it was Matt Sarah and Ray Longo sitting in that locker room, man. Playing cards, having a good time, talking, just happy to be there. And George St. Pierre was a mess. I went, oh, my God. Well, there's, He's not ready to fight. There's a lot more pressure fighting someone that you feel like shouldn't really be in there with you. Like the expectation yeah. of the guy you've seen yeah. come up and be the number one contender, you knew it was going to happen. Mentally, you're prepared for that. You expected that fighter to be there. there. But there was so many things that people didn't look at that really, I think, caused George other concerns and pressures. You know, the, just the fact of where where did where did Matt Sarah learn? Where where did he, where did he come up? Mm. Henzo Gracie, yeah, right. Who was who was who was you know uh, George St. Pierre's guy that he was going to? Henzo Gracie, yeah. Henzo and Dan, John and, Danaher, and, and yeah, and all they would talk about was how, how good Matt Sarah is. Mm. You know, and and those kind of things I think just worked against him in the end. It was so many things. It was his management. It was just so many things that he was not in the right frame of mind to fight. And it, and it shows. Scroll back to the, a little bit there, Dave. Oh, you have the Robbie Lawler situation where Robbie retires, um, you know, and then you had Cowboy Cerrone, his retirement. I mean, it was, it was pretty. Yeah. Like for me, I, like we kind of came up all, they were slightly behind me. Um, but it, it was still Robbie and I came up at the same exact time. The fact that he kept fighting for so long, geez, man. I, this is the part that I really enjoyed where they had the, like the, the media days where, you know, John Jones is supposedly kind of talking to Israel Adesanya and stuff. And 
you got Sugar Sean going with Dominic Cruz. I go, that's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely is. Chuck and and John Jones. Chuck and they'd John had Jones, some yep. beef back and forth. That was uh, yep. DC versus Mark Coleman. Yeah, that never. That happened. never. No, obviously it never <laughs> happened. But you know, and then Shevchenko versus yeah. Ronda. Yep. Someone brought up a good Matt Matt Hughes against Kamara Usman, which would have been. Great. That would have been a great fight. Tony and Habib yep. scheduled five times or four times, never came to fruition. Yep. Yeah, just some good fights, man. Some fights that we we definitely could have seen or didn't get an opportunity to see. Yep. You know? Really cool. Ah, great job, though. Great job by the UFC on their promo leading up to UFC 300. Yeah, whoever put that together, man, pat yourself on the back. One last thing. Special. Max Holloway came out and said that he would like because for the BMF title to be put around his waist by Mark I Coleman. I loved what he said. I loved what he said. I think that's amazing. Good job, Max, yep. man. I appreciate yep. that. Go ahead. Max Holloway, that's why we love that's you. That's why we love you. You're a good man.